Adriana Pless is a student of journalism and public communication at UAA. Audrey is perhaps best known for the work that she's done for Concert Board, as well as our campus radio station, KRUA 88.1 FM The Edge. I caught up with Audrey ahead of her graduation this spring. Of the artists that have come up, um, uh, which ones have stuck out in your mind as particularly spectacular performances? Uh, St. Vincent. Uh, St. Vincent was one of the first artists that I worked with the members of Concert Board to bring up as an elected member. And I just remember her show featured a lot of different emotions. It was sensual at one moment, then hectic, then angry, then disorganized purposely. Um, and it was like this wonderful melodic experience. Ooh, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Shout out to Felipe Godoy for that one. Um, he came to the board and he's like, man, I think Macklemore and Ryan Lewis are blowing up. And that's right before Thrift Shop had just taken off. Like, it was just getting a little bit of steam. Um, underground rapper from the Seattle, Washington area had been around for a while. Had a lot of mixtapes. And it was one of those things that we got the deal done, but we had to, like, keep it underneath our hats for the longest, longest time. Matt and Kim. I didn't go to Matt and Kim, so I can't speak too much to that. I heard it was a party, though, and I like parties. <laughs> I love parties. Um, but, yeah, I didn't get a chance to go to that concert. That's the only concert that I missed as a concert board representative. Um, I'm not going to say it sucked because I was being an adult and being responsible and handling some things for myself, but it was nice to see that people took advantage of seeing a prominent electronic artist that has influenced that genre over the last few years and... It was a party, man. I heard like Kim was twerking and everything like that. That's I'll just leave it at that. I heard, I heard Kim got on some hands and started twerking, twerking. How are artists that are brought up to Anchorage? Uh, how is that whole process figured out? That whole process is basically determined among a group of seven students, and we just sit in a room for an hour and we generate a lot of lists. Um, we also pull names from the assessment surveys that we do throughout the year. The main one that we do is during campus kickoff, right after the campus kickoff show, which is a free event for the UA community. Um, but for the most part, we'll have like our top five artists that we think that are beneficial and pertinent to the UA community. And Zach Clark, who's the concert board coordinator, I um, mean, UA alumni goes in and offers offers to those artists and basically it ends up being a game of like, who's available, who's not, are you even working right now, no. Uh, oh, the one thing that's been cool over the last year is that for the most part, every artist that has come up, we've gotten the opportunity to meet them and take a photo with them. And just to have the opportunity to be that close to someone that I've been listening to either since I was 13 or when I got right into college, like those people as artists will never know how they affected me or my peers. So to be able to like shake their hand, be near their beards, uh, check them out, like, whoa, it's been amazing. Um, and I understand that's an opportunity that I wouldn't have gotten anywhere else. Alaska Airlines Center. Yeah. The Alaska Airlines Center is going to be huge for the community. Um, and students, UA students, you're coming to a campus now that's sort of making a transition from being dry to wet. Like, that facility is going to have alcohol in it. Um, the big thing that I'll be able to do is it's it was created to be able to host sound and the right tones. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't just slopped together to be like, oh, you can host an event here and we forgot about sound quality. Like, that event is, that building is all about, like, the best sound available. Students can now just walk over directly to that venue, go and attend a game, go and attend a concert, go consume a beer if they choose, go and get lunch, see some art, see the Hall of Fame. Like it's for that one building just to bring that much collegiate feel to campus is huge. And it'll be interesting to see how students take advantage of it because now you can't really complain that you don't have anything in your backyard anymore. Like that's gonna sort of be the hub of life for our university now. And I think it'll probably take some time to get used to, but it's something that I would just tell people to jump on board, take advantage of the opportunities that come around because you have the ability to set traditions now. It's like our university barely has any traditions. I don't see any trees being teepeed, anything like that. And I sort of feel like the Alaska Airlines Center is going to inspire that. And I, I'm all for things like that. It's like you sort of have to have some mischievousness in regards to 
productiveness for the student mentality and creative aura. So, in 10 years, I see Carrie Waysor being a renegade on campus with the Northern Light. I feel like we're the two student organizations that have the ability. Obviously, we know we're part of UA, but we have the ability to sort of nurture this autonomy respectfully. And I think that it's time that students sort of acknowledge that and sort of start championing championing around that to get things done for the most part. I can truly say that just through volunteering and participating at UA on concert board, within Student Life and Leadership, within CARE UA, even in the journalism department, that I've just obtained a wealth of knowledge. Um, I've matured a lot. I've become a woman while I've been here. Um, and people have seen me act a fool and they've seen me grow up. And I think I've really had a book in situation here, which I understand that most people do not get the luxury of having, so.